The Girl in the Locked Room by Mary Downing Hand. Chapter 7. Jewels. After lunch, Mom opened her laptop and got to work on book four of a mystery series set in Maine. I knew better than interrupt her when she was writing. I grabbed a book and sat outside in the shade cast by a picnic table's green, big green umbrella. In the old house, the crew ripped pilot off windows and tore up floorboards, drills, hammers, saws. The noise made it hard to concentrate on reading. I laid the book aside and decided to take a walk. Maybe I'd go back to the stream and sit in the shade of the willow tree. It was cooler there, a lot quieter. I hadn't gotten out of sight of the house when I noticed a broken wood chair poking up from the weeds. Looking closer, I saw a few window frames and a heap of wrapped boards. The cleanup crew must have forgotten to haul the stuff away. Maybe they hadn't even seen it. In one of my history classes, I learned about middens, the name for places where people threw their trash in olden days. Archaeologists discover a lot about the past from what they find in middens, our teacher said. Suppose I had find, found the place where the middens threw their trash. I squatted down and poked in the weeds. This would be my dig. If I dug deep enough, I'd unearth older, more interesting stuff, things the Bennett's had owned, like an archaeologist. I'd learn about the family from what they'd thrown away. I found a large bent spoon and used it to dig in the muddy ground. At first, all I found were broken china, misshapen forks, spoons, fragments of wood, scraps of cloth, odds and ends, and told me nothing about the Bennett's or what happened to them. With a sigh, I turned back to the midden. I was hot and sweaty now, and clouds of gnats had discovered me. Just as I was about to quit, I saw a small hand sticking out of the muddy ground. I drew back, startled, but almost immediately realized it was not the hand of a baby, but a doll. Carefully, I dug around it and eased gently out of the ground. The doll's hollow china head was bald. She had no eyes, and her face was cracked and chipped. Her leather body was stained, and her arms and legs dangled loosely from one from it. One hand was missing altogether, and the other hand had no fingers. Although the doll looked more like a dead body than a toy, I laid her carefully on the grass with the, the broken things. Perhaps she belonged to the girl I'd seen in the field. She had a doll with her. She'd had a doll with her. It had been beautiful, not hideous, but the doll from the midden might have looked like that one. I studied the doll's damaged face. Yes, with eyes that opened and shut, rosy cheeks, a wig of long curls, and a pretty dress, she'd look just like the one laying beside the girl. Maybe Mom would know of a place that repaired antique dolls. Turning back to my dig, I probed the earth gently, the way I thought an archaeologist would, hoping to discover other things the girl wants on. I dug up a noseless china shepherd, an armless shepherdress, and several tailless dogs, most of them lacking a leg or two as well. My favorite discovery was a set of seven small china dolls. The two largest were about five inches tall, but the others were much smaller, just two or three inches. Each was mold molded in one piece, so neither their arms nor their legs moved. Their hair was painted on, and their painted faces were almost worn away. I laid them beside the ugly bald doll and lined them fr up from biggest to smallest. I pictured the girl playing with them in a dollhouse built by her father. I saw her kneeling on the floor, her hair hiding her face, and moving the dolls on their tiny feet from room to room. Click, click, click. Then I heard tiny scratching voice began to speak. I'm scared, the littlest doll said. Hush, the biggest one. Go upstairs and lock yourself in the room before the bad man gets you. Frightened, I dropped the dolls and spun around to see who'd spoken. No one was behind me. When I looked up at the window on the third floor, I saw something that might have been a small figure almost hidden in the shadows. I jumped to my feet. Who said that? Who are you? Whoever had been in the window was gone. At my feet, the little dolls lay silently in the weeds where I dropped them. Beside them was an old key, about six inches long, coated with rust and mud. How had I missed seeing it? I picked the key up and examined its scrollwork and the fancy details. It weighed heavy in my hand, a serious key, an important key, a powerful key, a key to what? The sun was lower now, and the long shadows of the house lay in the dark hand over the midden and the things I'd found. Suddenly, I didn't want any of them. The bent silverware or the broken china, the ugly bald doll or the little china figurines, they were possessions of dead people, contaminated somehow. I dumped them into the hole I dug and shoved dirt on top. This time, they'd stay buried. Without looking at the third floor, I walked away, quickly, but I couldn't escape the sensation of being watched. The little girl was in that room. I was convinced of it. Was she afraid of me? Was I afraid of her? Should she be? Should I be?